Hey everybody, welcome back to Super Mega Baseball 3. We're continuing year one with the Sharks, and we're about a quarter of the way through the season. We are, right now, the worst team in the league at 3-7 with a negative 37 run differential. We got some time to make some things better on this team, and I've considered making our very first free agent move of the entire series. I plan to sim a couple games today just to see where things go, and then we could take on our old team, the B-Wolves. We haven't done that yet. That'd be fun if, uh, you know, pitching against Andy McKenzie is anybody's idea of fun, but it would be ace versus ace. I wouldn't mind doing that at all. Lately, the offense has been getting a little bit better. Sylvester Seymour is now a league leader at RBIs. He does have three home runs as well on the season. Which isn't quite top 10, but it's close. Why don't we simulate these first games then? Hopefully get a couple victories here. Phantoms. Yes, this is good. That is very good. We get to 4 and 7. And I want to sim one more. Alright, we're seeing a very interesting uh, dynamic here in the Western Conference. We have four teams... Two games above 500 or better, and then four teams, two games below. So we could start to see a little separation here in the wild card race, or the playoff race in general, earlier than expected. But I want to simulate this game now against the B-Wolves. Hopefully Madrano can have a better outing. Our pitching mojo has not been in a very good spot this year. And wow, we get another win. And I saw that Boof Cobb cashed in our winning run. Boof Cobb's season is just beyond anything that I could have imagined, but of course, the player that the chat loves from NFL head coach is having an awesome year as he gets more chances. And here are the new updated standings. We are no longer in last place. We actually have ourselves a two-game winning streak. And now get our ace, Tyrus Sparks versus Andy McKenzie. But what's Boof Cobb up to now? Here are updated stats. Ollie Sparks has a home run now. And Boof Cobb is hitting 9 for 15, so still a 600 average. Not a ton of at bats for him, but he's making the most of it, and that's what this team needs right now. Still three players with really, really high ERAs that we gotta work on fixing. Madrano seems to have had a better outing in his last game, but we're still having a lot of issues here with Elijah Cruz. So, today. I think we will make a move, if possible. All these contract demands are going down. And I don't think anybody's made any sort of move. And I would like to start... Whoa! Brady Shannon plus 7 power. The move I wanted to make was to cut Brady Shannon. 7 power is kind of a big deal. Here's what I was planning on doing. There was, uh... An outfielder I thought that would be better. Sonny Cooker. His contract demand has come down. He's still better than Shannon. But that 7 power is kind of interesting. Still, Cooker has uh, better power than him. I guess it's a plus 30, so we shouldn't be too impressed by the plus 7. Maybe we should make this move anyway. It's only a boost in $3 million. For a player that has significantly more power in contact, he just wouldn't be as good in the field. Are we willing to take that hit? I think I want to make the move. I want to make the upgrade here. Sonny Cooker added to the team. We have finally made our first roster move, really, of the entire series. So immediately, we add a player who has the 5th best contact now on the team, but also the 3rd, or the 5th highest power rather, and the 3rd highest contact. So that does give us a little bit of a weakness here in the outfield, especially considering we already have Gonzalez, who's a pretty much a DH player. I think Cooker could do that, but obviously his ratings aren't quite as uh, bad for defense, so he can play that. That does, of course, impact our economy here a little bit. Now we have a surplus of 4.4 million, and we're getting less funds over the course of the season now because of that surplus going down. So we'd only get 91,000 a week or after each game to do development. Speaking of, we still have 800k, 
And there are a few players here. We could, uh, I don't want this one for Waddle. We talked about that. Talked about the one for Neil Hope already. But juicing program for Tate Taylor. A 25% chance at 16 power. Taylor is a backup player. He's 28 years old. I don't know if I want to do that one just because he's older and I don't know if he's going to be a player that we try building around at all. I think what I'd rather do is try to save here for Dino Madrano and in a couple games might take three or four but um, he would have the ability to maybe get a big velocity boost like plus eight's a big deal anyway and maybe K-Man that could change his entire season. Well, let's get into this game now against the B-Wolves. It's Sparks versus McKenzie. Four homers on the year for Lance Adams. Somehow we have to make sure he doesn't have a monster game. I doubt it works. Wow, they have like no mojo boosts, but they do have Lance Adams basically with 100 plus ratings. So uh, that'll be a lot of fun. We open the day. Ty Gonzalez. Haven't had that many good hitting outings with him lately. Not sure if I should bat lead off with him. That's hit pretty well, though. Two strikes quickly. I know the hitting overall has gotten a little better in recent episodes, but for some reason there are certain players that I just do really well with and certain players that I constantly struggle with. We all know Seymour's one of the players I've been having a pretty good time with in this series, and he reaches once again. First hit of the day, and now Neil Hope. The average is in a really good spot. Imagine if he wasn't so unlucky in the very beginning of the series. He hit over 400 right now. Ooh, that's a weird hit, and it's going to be down. Okay. Seymour, stay at second. Two on. We upgraded Casey Daniels last episode, but we got to work on fixing this mojo. I think an RBI here would definitely take care of it. Behind in the count again. McKenzie 1 2. Wow, upstairs, and that's strike three. And now we get the debut Sonny Cooker. Very first game of his career. I like the stance. I did customize his number to be double zero. Alright, two strikes now from Andy. And Cooker into left field! A base hit, and we're not testing Lance Adams. Loaded now in the first inning for Omar Serrano, who has four ribbies on the year. He wants something outside and gets it! Of course, I swung way too early. All right, three hits in the opening, though. We'll take that. And look who's batting leadoff, everybody. Leon Daniels. Not enjoying the best season, though. Daniels has one RBI. It was a solo home run. He's hitting 219. And we're trying to get another strikeout with Tyrus Sparks. And we don't get it. Pass Boof Cobb into center field. I'm just going to keep Boof Cobb in the starting lineup, by the way, because he has locked-in mojo. I might as well keep playing with him. I know it's taking away playing time from all these sparks, but Cobb's been incredible. That's hit hard. Two outs, right? Yes, okay. Thank you, Andrew Ross. And now what do we do? Anybody got any ideas for how to pitch to Lance Adams? Maybe just give him a first base. Although it's 0-2. On the ground, and Boof Cobb's got this one. All right, a scoreless first inning. But we got some runs, or uh, some hits going, and maybe we can keep that up against Andy. Wow, those strikes are so tough. And then Waddle down on the high fastball. Andy with a pretty good start here. Couple strikes now on Hudson Lumen. And that's another strikeout. Three already for Andy McKenzie. But can he strike out the great Boof Cobb, who's hitting 600? 
Doesn't even want to go in the strike zone against Boof Cobb. He's scared of Boof. 2-0. Cobb! Oh my goodness! He's just unstoppable! The most dominant force in Super Mega Baseball is Boof Cobb. Ty Gonzalez back up now. Only two RBIs. No! Why can't I start missing those? Just swing and miss. Works a lot better. Alright, Flash Jackson on the ground. Seymour with the great diving stop. Tyrus Sparks. 266 ERA. I've talked about this before. Like, if we want to release Sparks, we could get a big upgrade somewhere. But if pitching is our main weakness, that seems kind of counterintuitive. Although, my expectation. Waddle traps it at least, stops it. My expectation is that Sparks test free agency after this year, and if we want to keep him, the price will nearly double. Or has the potential to. Daniels over his head, barely into left center. Like, the idea of trying to figure out how to keep Sparks with uh, our limited cap space doesn't sound like a lot of fun. We'd have to really take uh, some other salaries down on offense, most likely. Come on, you gotta chase one of these. Another base hit. Three in a row for the B-Wolves. Serrano with a perfect throw, and they leave everybody at their bases. So Darren Rose, we could double him up. But we're gonna have to get something hit right at us. That'll do. But it's only one. Ralph Hendricks. I think part of this game is going to have to be uh, a balance between having stars and then uh, what I would call like a stud and dud lineup where you have a lot of really good players and then, you know, a lot of your bench is probably going to be really weak. So it's a roster construction that allows you to get top players, but you know your depth is going to be really, really low. It may work. By the way, got out of that jam. Base is loaded, one down, no runs here for the B-Wolves at all. And that's another single for Sylvester Seymour, the early season MVP for the Sharks. Two quick strikes from McKenzie. And a nice catch by Ralph Hendricks. Having some issues here with Casey lately. Just not hitting that well, and that's not going to change the trend to away. How about Sonny Cooker, though? Another player I can try out power swings with. Cooker drills one to left field. His second hit in two attempts. So we're getting on base. And he's thrown a lot of pitches so far. Well, not a lot, just uh. An average amount. Just gotta get some scoring. And that won't do it. Alright, we're through two and a half. Ten combined hits. Back to the top of the B-Wolves order. Leon Daniels' turn. Two quick strikes. What does it take to get a strikeout? A lot. There we go. Sorry, Leon. Strike three. 2-5-3 ERA now for Tyrus Sparks. Want to get that to the low twos if we can. Strikeouts will help. I mean, that was a great pitch right there at 102. Let's go. Oh, boy, Lance Adams. I don't want him on base. Well, I really don't want him to hit a home run. 
I think he's a bit too far underneath that one. It's going a long way, though. All right, we're through three. Seven, eight, nine hitters do up, and Waddle is really struggling. Definitely, it feels like there's a larger strike zone in this game. Some of these corners just seem like they're extended a little bit further. That's a drive now from Waddle. But even the good swings won't go anywhere. Useful. How about Hudson Lumen? Yeah, I can hit with him no problem. Certain players I can just figure it out with. And now we have Boof Cobb on fire. Ratings are in a great spot for him. Let's go, Boof. Cobb, through the middle, he's done it again. Two more hits here in the fourth inning for us. Ty Gonzalez trying to do something with it. But two quick strikes instead. And now a low ground ball, and we know he's getting doubled up. Last episode, there was one where it wasn't even a clean play, and he got doubled up, so I know anything... Like that, it's going to be an easy play. All right, a lot of runners left on base for us as we go bottom four. And Hope stops this one and makes the play. Jonathan Starks. One pitch and another out. Mojo going up now for Tyrus. He's locked in, which I think is the second best Mojo you can have. Throwing some decent power pitches here. Maybe I can get a strikeout. Corey Boy! Down swinging! Who wants to score the first run? That's close. Not so much on that one, Andy. Pitch 57. Right through the middle. Neil Hope trying to get us our first run. Ooh, 84 power the other way. Just didn't hit it squarely. Uh-oh, Casey's rattled now. Like, we have some issues here with a few different players. Fielding would go down here for Sparks. I mean, Entertext isn't rattled. Let's play Entertext. 429 average. Him and Boof Cobb are going to fix the season. We're already 2-0 and on the day. A win here would just be fantastic. But Enter Text won't be contributing with this swing. Two down. Sonny Cooker. He's already 2-for-2. Two two. What's next? Cooker into center with 95 power, and it will fall in. He's three for three, and Seymour safe at third base. Got aggressive there, and now first and third. Omar Serrano. Behind that one. Serrano, center. Another inning with two left on base. I believe that's four out of five innings it's happened. Really good at getting on base and then not scoring. All right, let's go for another power pitch here. I want that high fastball. That's good. Wow. Softly to Serrano, one away. Sparks has only thrown 54 pitches at this point. And your aces tend to have stamina that can go up to like 120 or so. Nice play by Boof Cobb. I talked about my ego adjustments at the end of last episode, but from where we were previously, fielding is dropped by 5. And now uh, the pitching, I believe, is at 68. So we've come down a good ways there, trying to find the, the right sim setting for me. Here's Demario Waddle. 140 average with his ratings. I never expected that. It's all in my head. I just can't get a good swing with him. 
Hudson Lumen. He's retired on two pitches. Boof Cobb's on fire. The fans love him. And Boof Cobb has another hit! I don't know what it is! Lance Adams, though, can't get him at second base. How many RBI opportunities has Ty had? Come on. Gonzalez to center, and Boof Cobb rounds third. Jackson's throw is not in time, and it's 1-0, Sharks. Boof Cobb has done it again. Now Sylvester Seymour. Uh-oh, foul by inches. Nice. Another base hit. Not having too many issues with that against McKenzie. Two more base runners in the sixth. Oh, I shattered it. Will it fall in, though? Nope. All right, we got one. 13 hits to convert one run. But we lead. And Sparks is having an outstanding day. He's uh, down to a 225 ERA. That should have been a strikeout. Andrew Ross. He's retired quickly. Lance Adams. Uh-oh. Seymour! What a play at third. That didn't take too long. To the seventh inning we go. Enter text. Way in front of it. Now Whiffer's activated. So his contact is way down. We'll try to make McKenzie earn this out. There we go. It took like five pitches. I know his stamina is coming down. Sonny Cooker is three for three. Three singles. He has four in his very first game. So far that move has paid off. Serrano now. He's juiced but also tense. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, Andy. Hopefully he's all right. Two on now, and McKenzie's day is done. He's rattled. His fitness is fine. But a tough one for McKenzie. A lot of hits allowed, but if they get out of this inning with one run, I mean, it's a pretty good outing for him. Brett Mitchell now out of the bullpen. He throws a two-seam, a slider, and curb, so I got to count on some movement here. <sighs> what was that? That was almost a double play. Should have been. Hudson Lumen, second and third. Lumen finds the gap, and that will be two runs on the board. Lumen to second, three nothing Sharks. And of course, Boof Cobb. Can't forget about him. Cobb has reached base again. And now, going home! No! Too slow. 17 hits for the Sharks. Cooker retires the batter on one pitch. Tyrus Sparks trying to go for a complete game here as this one is poked over and right again. B-Wolves, what's going on with you today? They had to meet Tyrus Sparks. Cooker, very busy here in the seventh inning. Got his fourth hit and records all three outs. 17 hits. The contact ones have been a lot better for me. It's the power swings that I'm just really inconsistent at. Well, that's pretty well hit. A contact swing off the wall! I have no contact swing home runs in this game, and that could have been number one. Sylvester Seymour. 
I think I'm four for four with three different players right now. Ah! Go back. We gotta get this fourth run. Neil Hope. For some reason, just no plate discipline. That's okay, we got enter text. Just one base hit. That's all we need. So far in front of it. Into right. It will fall in. Enter text brings home our fourth run of the game. This is one of our most dominant efforts to this point. We're not quite done. Third pitcher now coming in, Eric Hancock. Sonny Cooker's four for four. And he may not get to five for five. All right, going for the complete game here with Tyrus Sparks. We could potentially... No, I think we would see Lance Adams one more time no matter what. But we're not taking Sparks out until the B-Wolves make us. There we go. Line to hope. This is the value of an ace pitcher. And perhaps today begins the turnaround for us. Serrano's back and tries to make a leaping grab. But it's a double. First hit in a while for the B-Wolves. Leon Daniels retired quickly, and that's the eighth. All right, one inning to fix it for the B-Wolves. Serrano up the middle, rips a single to center. All these hits, and still nothing for Demario Waddle. Waddle with a drive! Come on, 96 power! You gotta give him something! Come on! On the track! I can't believe that. Here's Lumen. Trying to make sure we get to Boof Cobb one more time. The pressure's on. Can't ground into a double play here. Wow, what a jump. That was perfect. Alright, no double play happening unless I line out. And we narrowly avoid that. First and third now. For the perfect Boof Cobb. Four for four. A double and three singles. He's on fire. Come on, Boof. Boof Cobb! You gotta be kidding me. Another RBI single. Well, took a while to get to an episode like this, but here you go. Just a big party for the Sharks. Well, the center and out. All right, two down in the ninth, and Sylvester Seymour's up again, four for five on the day. Uh oh, got away, and um, okay, I got one runner advanced. Kind of caught me off guard there. Ooh, that was a bad pitch. Full count, and now they're loaded. What can we do now? Neil Hope, Grand Slam, let's go! Let's speak it into existence. Didn't work, oh my! Base hit. Enter text. Wow. One fitness. What happened? Extreme pain. All right, we're going all these sparks here for the Grand Slam. Come on, let's go 10 nothing. Ball inside. One and one. Sparks with a drive. It has a shot. It's gone. Grand slam, Ollie Sparks. 10 nothing Sharks. I cannot believe it just happened. Pinch hit grand slam. Sunny Cooker. Ah, I just went after that one. Well, I think.
think we're going to win this one. Substitutions. Let's uh get Taylor out there. Let's get Swanson out there. Empty the bench. And let's end this game. I want the shutout. Complete game shutout. 10-0 win with a grand slam. Imagine we win only like uh like 10 to 6 now, like we needed that grand slam. Oh my. That could be two. Wow! And now, down to their last out. And that is it for this one, everybody. What an episode! By far the best for the Sharks in so many different ways. Best hitting episode, best pitching episode, best simming episode. A roster move, a successful one was made. I just couldn't get a hit with the Mario Waddle, 0 for 5. We still have some work to do, but now we're 6 and 7, and I mean, we're one game out of first place right now if you look at the standings. So, uh, you know, it looked like we could possibly be the worst team and really have some major issues, and maybe we are, but uh, we're not today. We just won three straight games, so we're celebrating this episode. Let's we'll simulate all the results here. Raptors out in front, 10 and 4. That kind of came out of nowhere. The Freeze were on top for a while, but the Raptors suddenly six games above 500. Next episode, we look to see how long we can keep this streak going. We had a number of losses in a row, five. Baseball can get streaky at times, though. If we start losing again, that'll be an issue. We get the Prowl, the Cobras, and the Scorpions in our next game. The Prowl are in a good spot. The Scorpions, one game worse than them. So we'll see what's next. But that sure helped us make a lot of progress today. And now Sonny Cooker has the best average in the entire league. And uh, the best on base, the best on base plus slugging. What a great game. I hope you all enjoyed today's episode. Please leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And next time, we'll see if Boof Cobb can continue his dominance. If anybody can stop Sylvester Seymour. And if we can continue this winning streak. Have a great day, everybody.